eight years ago, I was standing in this very hall, finishing my last high school exam at Sydney Boys, and I thought to myself, what am I going to do with my life? And the answer was, I had no freaking idea. But I was very lucky, I had a mother who was very supportive. She said, son, you can be the doctor, the lawyer, or the engineer. I'm just kidding, my mother doesn't even have an accent. But eight years later, I am now the founder and CEO of two companies. And ironically, coming out of a law degree, I founded a software company. And uh, the clip is not working, unfortunately. There we go, magic, some behind the scenes help. I founded a software company called Checkbox which is uh, now three years old, doing very well, and also uh, Magic Click of Person in the Back. Also a tuition company called Hero Education. And because of this, uh, you know, a lot of people think that I'm very successful. I was able to win multiple awards, raise millions of dollars in capital, and this year was listed as a Forbes 30 under 30. But if I'm being honest with you, uh, I don't see any of this as really being success. See, at Cure Education, I've been mentoring senior high school students for over eight years now, and I've had the privilege to be able to share the same question that I ask myself with them hundreds of times. What are you going to do once you finish high school? And they had the same answer that I did. No freaking idea. And so I asked them, well, what do you think is Success, what do, you, what do you see as yourself as being successful? And there were always two common answers that arose. The first was getting a really good job, something that had a really good status. And the second thing was making lots of money. And I think this is a very common misconception. And I, and I said to them, you know, whenever I came across this, I said, let me tell you a bit of the story. I had a lot of friends who ended up working for law firms, and I was catching up for breakfast with one of them. And uh, the person that I knew at university who was really energetic, really bubbly, was now really lifeless and miserable. And the craziest thing happened. She literally broke down crying at the thought of work. And a lot of my friends, a lot of my friends, they actually told me that they were really unhappy with their work and that they would just stick it out for another three years. Um, and that's when I realized that, you know, it's so important for people when making a critical decision in the senior high school years of their life to pick what is important as opposed to what is, you know, the highest status or perhaps what, what earns the most amount of money. And so I call this failing successfully at life, which is really simple. Let me take you through it, right? It's, it's you know, number one, do well in high school, right? And once you do well in high school, you can, you can get into a very prestigious course at a prestigious university, and you graduate top of class. Sounds pretty good. You get into a well-paid job at a company that everyone wants to work for, cha-ching, you get promoted, you work really hard, you get promoted, and you know, you go out on Friday nights to escape the grind, you end up going out every single night to escape the grind, you spend all your money on buying things that try to find happiness or perhaps make you a little bit less unhappy, and then you become an alcoholic, you also have your partner leave you because you're, 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 your life is a mess and you die a lonely and miserable life. So I know this is a bit over dramatic, I get it, but the point I'm trying to make here is that people are so obsessed with how to become successful, but really the most important question is what does success mean to you? And I, and I think that the key here is understanding your purpose. And this is really important because purpose is what intrinsically makes you happy. It is the why that transcends both status and money. 
It is what gets you out of bed every single morning and allows you to do what is perhaps really painful, a lot of hard work, and maybe not the thing that pays you the best. And I've been working at Checkbox, you know, the startup company I founded, and I've been largely unpaid for three years, working 16 hours a day. If you could get a close-up of my face, you could see the dark circles and the bloodshot eyes. But my friends think I'm crazy, and they feel sorry for me. But I think they're crazy, and I feel sorry for them, because they have to work eight hours a day on something that they hate. And I get to do something that I love for twice that amount of time. And so, how do you actually find purpose? Because for some of you, it might be to become a doctor, a, a lawyer, an engineer. But, but for most of you, it's not. So how do you find your purpose? It's such a tricky thing to do. It's like, what is the meaning of life? Ah, I don't know, right? So how do you find it? The key is exposure. No one here is expected to know what your purpose is. You find it out. It's through exposure. It's through doing, you know, getting a job, it's through co-productivity, it's through hobbies, it's through sports. And it's not necessarily about discovering the big things, it could be the small things. Whether you like numbers over words, whether you like to work in a team, or alone. Or maybe it's whether you want to lead, or follow. But exposure is really, really important in order to work out what you like and what you don't like. And yes, sometimes you will suck at it. You will suck at things that you try. There's a very wise man, Magic Thank you. There's a very wise man, Einstein said, everyone is a genius. But if you judge a fish on its ability to climb a tree, it will live the rest of its life believing it is stupid. And this is really powerful. I call this the success, the cycle of success destruction. It sounds, yeah, destructs, destruction, success destruction. So the way I call this is, it's very simple. Let's start at the top. Let's use an example, right? So, you know, let's start with the environment. Let's take school as an example. So you're in school, that's your environment, and because of that, you have the belief that perhaps success is correlated with your, your marks. And so the action that you take is you study really hard, and perhaps your results isn't as good as you wanted them to be. Maybe it's through directly your parents, your teachers telling you that they're not good enough, or perhaps it's just indirectly through your marks. I mean, the marks themselves speak probably stronger than your teachers and parents. And what that does is it starts to allow you to set goals that are of lower standard, because that's what you've now positioned yourself as. And if you're passive about your purpose, then you end up back in this cycle and you get worse and worse, and you end up in this, in this cycle that I see a lot of students go through. And it's, it's really sad. And, and, and you start to build what is known as learned helplessness. It's this feeling that you can't achieve. Not because you can't, but because you've been fed this kind of feedback that you can't. And so I had a student a few years ago who um, came in for the first lesson and I could tell that he was in this kind of cycle, this trap. He was performing really poorly at school and he had no self-confidence in how he performed academically. And all I did was I treated him differently. I treated him like, you know, he was, I told him that he was smart, that he was capable. Which was probably the first time he's really heard that and felt that and was treated that way. And very slowly, through a series of very small wins, he began to build confidence. He built confidence, and one day his mother called me, and she was in tears, she was crying. And she said, um, my son just got 53 in his physics exam. And I was like, oh, I'm in trouble. But then she, she actually said, no, I'm really, really happy. I'm crying from happiness because this is the first time in his life that he has ever passed a physics exam. And because of that, he then went on to TAFE and studied electro uh, technology for someone who was at risk of dropping out of education altogether. And so I share that story with you to show you the power in believing in yourself and, and for those parents and teachers in the room to also you know, believe in, in the children, the power you can have 
in breaking this cycle. This is a cycle and it will feed itself unless you break it. And the example that I gave you was about breaking a cycle, I guess at the results point, but you can break at any point. And, and to give you, you know, some power in breaking this yourself, I think the, the most easiest and more, most impactful one is, is environment. Which is why I say go out and explore, experiment, discover what you're good at, what you're not good at, what you love and what you don't love. Because ultimately that will feed back into your purpose, which will then bring you what is truly what is you know, success in this world. And so I want to share with you my own purpose. Um, I was very lucky to have had the right things happen to me and feel the confidence for me to believe that I could go and pursue that, pursue, pursue that purpose as well. And I truly believe that my purpose is to learn and achieve as much as I can so that, that I can inspire and lead and teach others. And so I question and I challenge you today to think about what is your purpose. If you are a teacher or an adult or a parent, I want to challenge you today to think about how you can help your kids discover their purpose, understand their purpose. Because whilst helping them understand E equals MC squared or Hamlet will help them succeed in their school exams, it is actually helping them understand their purpose in life that will help them uh, be successful with their life. And for the students in the room, I challenge you to also try and work out what your purpose is. It's very intimidating, I know. I've been there not too many years ago myself on this road of just study. But it is so important for you to be exposed and have that self-awareness to try co-curricular, to start a pet project, to do volunteering, to perhaps organize a TEDx at your school. Because it is through these experiences that you learn what your purpose is. You can't do that through studying alone. So I hope that after this talk, no one here will live their life failing successfully. Because Success and purpose is not defined by others, it is defined by yourself. So go and find out what that is, pursue it ruthlessly, and uh, success will follow. Thank you.